drawn like a pattern at the foot of which was a nine that was the sixes opposite at an arrow. This is what I found in the safe, the circular safe, the target. At its foot, a point went round and round. Watch the six! I heard Alexandra call. It turns. The pirate goes down. Dive, 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 she called, as she went to the window and held her forehead. Her forehead with her finger points. Her hair hung down and I bare shoulders went forward. She was dressed in a tight dress and her face, her beautiful face, leaned forward as she called. I built the pirate, she said. It can propel like hell. It can rocket. It can leave here. It can help you. It can fly. It can ascend and descend. Emerge, submerge from water. Look at it go down at the rate that it goes below, beyond the pirate island and there, renewing its energy, spirit, it speeds along. Used to be like a sardine tin, she said. I laughed. I know she referred to the prehistoric, archaic century. But I studied the habits of the Guilmots, the Guilmots, and perfected it, she said and laughed. God, she was like Jan Harrison. She emerged from this cave, this area. I realised she was Amazon. Amazon. Yes, of course. She was beautiful, beautifully built, long blonde hair in a swimming costume, a one-piece swimming costume on this island in this opening of this cave, this church-like area in the centre, surrounded by forests, and oh, there were others, other Amazons, and they they were all beautiful women. They, they sped, they moved along in these one-piece bathing costumes, and as, as I looked up, I saw to the horizon, the surf, the waves came in. There they were, they swam, they, they, they swam. Swam out to sea. Swam out to sea. It used to be in the 13th, 16th century, but now I looked at Pirate Island and there beyond. As she went on, she referred to the machine, as she said. It has swing wing, swimming propulsion instruments, and it can swim below the sea and up through the galaxy to the universe in one breath. She ended it there. I smiled as I looked at her figure, her body. It was magic indeed, this machine. Yes, it was given. I was privileged to see this amazing machine, her amazing machine. This, I called it a Zephyr machine. This phenomena, extraordinary. She so beautifully built and made her her DNA her her G this string I could see it through the X-ray the string of pearls I called it the the GNA the gene N A it was special it was how she they developed it I took it that she was their queen I, I saw that yes. She developed from some extraordinary, amazing sperm and egg that I wondered, I guess, was stored in this island in which I had found myself. I was given glasses, so they were perplex, X-ray vision lenses, and I, I saw her pirate machine. Yes, at, at depth. The pirate has gone through again, she said. It has cleansed. I see. Yes, I looked at her closely. The shape around the hips, the, the V. Yes, locked in the top of her thighs at the bottom of the one-piece bathing suit. And her cut breasts. It, she was certainly an eye to behold. I... I looked at her perfect face and her wide eyes, her pupils, her, they were blue, her
her nose, her lips, everything was special, her hair. She was a marvel, the perfect woman. She, this, she, this, she, Amazon. During this period of conundrum I had witnessed, events took place down below. I can now confirm. DJ had led me to Emily. Awoken. She had awoken. A terrible conundrum had gathered, she said. That's what this Amazon woman said who stood before me, she said. A terrible conundrum had gathered just at the point at which the pirate was situated, was built. She pointed to herself, her solar plexus, her area down below, and said, a film. I see. I, I looked at her a little askance because I wasn't sure she could speak any more English. But she looked heaven itself and... I entered the mansion. Yes, this heaven. In which I had taken refuge, exercise from the body of her, her mag, her magus. Louise, she came up to me. I saw the scarlet in her face, her trace, and her eyes glimmered and she looked away. Her hair was picturesque and contained little shining mirrors, sparkles that I saw, that I record in this diary, I remember. And her dress contained little tiny mirrors. I look at her portrait in the National Gallery, Gallery of Literature now, as my tongue slides over my mouth and I remember the operation that was conducted by the Amazons on me to obliterate and expiate and exorcise this trace of wire in me that was a, a death that I'd inherited and had broken my voice that I couldn't talk but I wrote it down here in this diary that reads as I look at her portrait in the National Gallery of Literature. All over Great Britain she is heard now. Spoken word, lyrics set to music. Only a few moments ago, it seems, I sat at the bench in the morning light at that evening, and it was, well, it was a little port called Port Isaac in Cornwall, watching out to sea as her, as, as Louise. I've painted her portrait now. As Louise approached me, and I can hear, see the words in the atmosphere as if they held in silver and crinkled a little and musically disappeared. They seem so simple in the atmosphere now, as I watch and remember. I saw her again last night, and we talked in the other area. She seems so visible these days. I hear the clink of glasses tinkling in the cavern. I remember. And now, in the darkness, I wander down to the park and sit on the bench and write this, this diary that remembers the entrance.
at the entrance of the solar plexus. Solar plexus opens. Combination, the bolt, the jewellery, the ruby, the painting. Yes, I, I painted the picture in the wall. The picture in the wall, but it was the wall of my cortex. That's where the painting was stored. I, I saw the lights come up on it. As if I was standing outside of myself, looking back into my myself, looking back into my my head, and it was a theatre. The inner cavern was a theatre, and on the back wall, which was my cortex, was the painting of Louise and all my witches that I had stored from memory from aeons ago. It was as if I was the audience, and I looked at the cortex, the back of my head, and it operated like a, a screen, like a cliff, actually, on which was placed a screen. A screen! And I can remember when I was in army cadets, when I was a boy, I, it was a similar feeling. I was looking up at the screen, and there was Vera Miles, the actress, in the movie Bo James. It was as if the we were outside, and it was as if the huge screen was like a cliff. That's how it was now, and it was stored in the back of my cortex. But I was an other, standing outside of myself, looking past my face at the darkness there was the light on the full length photograph of all my memories my witches Mary Mary Magdalene Louise Vera as as they revealed themselves and I I saw in this cliff that if you can imagine, operated like a solar plexus of the Amazon Jan Harrison I have told you of, was it was contained in it, inset, and it was as if it had a little safe round door, and if you knew the combination, you could open it. In other words, you could put your hand over the screen into its middle and open this solar plexus area by opening the safe, by twirling it and finding the dial and the right combination and entering the universe. It was a womb that entered, that opened the universe from the back of my head. But you had to develop the idea, the Ability to stand outside of yourself and look back into your f self's front like a mirror past your face and see the photographs, the film, for they joined. The photographs joined and a film moved across the cortex surface. That's how I did it. And I looked at the open door, a spotlight. On its shows, I remember it now. It was like opening a wardrobe. Like the lion in the wardrobe, of course. And first, sometimes I saw tombstones. I read off the inscriptions in the dark. David Pringle, DJ. Yes, Louise. Suzanne, Alicia. Pringle. Divine. DDP, they they were like a scroll that came down. But this was how it was. And the camera, the unicorn idea, it was the lens, yes, the projector, looked out like a revolver that went round and round like Russian roulette when you spun a chamber and a trigger at its base and underneath a, a, an X-ray and a box under the lower surface that turned the, yes, the reels that recorded the story that I am now telling. It, 
ran the film, of course. So that's how the film projector was invented. And through the lens that protruded through this horn of the unicorn symbol, it projected up onto the cortex screen the film I could see. And it was as if it expanded and projected up film in the universe that was also filtering in, unknown to me, consciously, unknown to my ego. Other stories, ancestral stories, came in, projected up onto the screen, and then bounced into the front, inverted commas, back of my face, my head, as if I had moved from a point in front of my face, now into the darkness in front of the projector surface cortex area, and looked as if I was sitting in the audience at the back of the front of my face, and of course there I saw the whole film. My eye, my eye saw it. It was actually in a sort of one eye, a, a huge eye, a an electronic eye that beamed out, that beamed out like a unicorn. Yes, this was this third eye talked about in legend and radio. I called it a pirate, the pirate. And of course, this is what I found and I could trigger it. And then another area would open. I called it heaven, and I would see Louise and Vera automatically. As if in a church, they they were solid as if you and me. This is what happened every night, <laughs> occasionally. Not every night, actually, but it was happening quite regularly now. As I say in this recording, this diary, I opened the solar plexus of this area into the univolt. The, uni the univolt, it was called. It was called a univolt, a one volt. And I called it a jewel, a ruby. I painted it all, put it in the wall, externally. I painted it huge picture in one wall and I used Jan Harrison as the model in this cell. Yes, I remember, I'm turning the pages of my diary remembering now that they said be a, a grave digger. Dig. I remember them saying it now, coming to me, my, my angels, they said the Air Force is strafing, the Army is cordoning off and it's Executing all members of the population that don't have the measurements that are not worthy. Not worthy. Yes, they're not worthy. We want the sperm, she said to me. They said to me, the, these Amazon women stood before me in these one-piece bathing costumes. Their long hair fell down their shoulders. They were beautiful and they said to me, we want the sperm, the DNA, the perfect DNA of the perfect person who is man, who we can find and who has some measurements. And is it David? We haven't been able to find him. They, they, they were getting quite... Mad, screaming, hysterical. We haven't been able to find him. We've sent the messages on the radio to the cortex to each and every one of these men on this earth. And it drives them mad because none of them can work it out, overcome the message. They won't even address it. They walk around uh, mad every day, nine to five, just drinking themselves stupid and blowing themselves up to smithereens, fighting amongst themselves, solving nothing. We've had enough of them, she said. And she said, we want one, number one, the perfect man. We want his sperm. We use it. This is the plan. We use it. We freeze it. Put him on ice forever in case we need it again in storage. 
but we use it and we we get the measurements. And then, well, Suzanne, she said in the court case, Alicia, add you men. I could hear the ship. Yes, it was arriving. It's docking. There they are, they're entering. Yes, I can hear the footsteps come in. Doctor? He used to be a Queen's Counsel. He still is. He's been given an honour doctorate. He's done all the rounds, been a judge, barrister, solicitor, crown prosecutor. Yes, a prospector bought this place. He's still all those things, alternates when it suits him. You old hag, how would you know? Well, I've been guarding this entrance for a hundred... It feels like a hundred and fifty years, and I tell you, young, young girl, that that it alternates when it suits him. He, if he can't be a solicitor, he's a, a writer. Well, you know what I mean, a playwright in the old centuries ago, um, till they fuse the professions. He's modernised, I tell you. Yes, been modernised, made <laughs> like those sort of new types, those machine type, yes, uh, you sure they're not called machinations? Yes, the word could mean that. It, certainly they were manipulative. That's, they, that's probably what caused all this war. Anyway, uh, I, I tell you, as sure as my name is Zabdella Dorado, she said, uh, I, he's converted this place from a sanitarium. Uh, to an inner constitution, if you like, stairwells, spiral staircases, and all are made into, well, wells and walls and circles and wind round as if the rings, uh, a triangle ascending, twirling and descending. It's uh, as if it's a brain in a mirror that we preserved in a bottle, a specimen in minute form in this this institution we, we, we held. There, there it is over there on the table. Look at it. It's a brain. It's a head. Of course it is. I, I see. I, I come from the ship that morning, walked in, and my memory, I, it was inset. I, I can remember seeing the walls. They were concave and leaning and like triangles that had fallen in on themselves, but they held. Uh, this was modernised, I suppose, on the inside. I'd heard the words that builders, apparently builders had come in and converted, and this was, what is it? What did you say? Della? Del Della Dorado, this, this whore, this hag, she called herself from, what, from... From days of Mole Flanders, she said. Uh, she she remembered that there was uh, a plan, a design, a modelling uh, based on a head, a head of man that had been left. Uh, a, a statue had been found. Liberty or, or of man, it was not sure, but it was as if this house in, that was, in which everything was stored was modelled on the architecture of the head, the brain, and it had been projected outward by its its designer, its architect, and recorded, written down, and external buildings had been built based on this, this order, this balance. That's what I was told. That's what she said as she showed me the body. The body was perfectly preserved, was... Beautiful, and she said, she's restless. I looked at her, she was in a threadbare white dress. She was quite beautiful, long blonde hair that changed as I looked at her, as if by some magic formula, I heard as music was in the air, musically I heard like a, yes, Beautiful music played as her hair turned into black, brown and tan. Her skin also. Oh, I could, felt my stomach was 
turning in on me and I remembered as I looked at her I felt quite I saw a number the number 10 branded into her forehead stamped like like the Countess de la Motte yes she was a criminal was she we'll have her in a straitjacket this time I heard the old hag say yes but her mouth didn't move. I looked into her, into her eyes and she wasn't old at all. She was quite attractive. Her eyes were moist, wide open. Her hair straggled, but still I got the impression she was quite together. Yes. She looked at me and I saw her eyes. Her eyes were open and they told me I read in them. I could see she was a transvisionary, a, a witch, and I saw in her eyes a film. And it said to me, this earth, it's been cleaned out, cleansed, murdered, murdered of those who don't have the measurements have taken place. The witches have taken revenge. This one should complete our task. The detective said those words. I heard them. I'm getting on to this now. That whore, he said. What? I remember now. What day you speak of those women like that with that language? You disgust me. You just murdered the feminine. It was the old Bible that I'd read. It said the murder of the feminine will do it. The reaction it will be. Yes, that's what I heard as the head moved and the beam. I, I watched the head. It perfected. It turned. Uh, who's got the measurements, the perfect measurements? The men, the women had perfected this beam so that it read men who were were walking in like me the detective others all on this earth that's no more this planet had gone and it was the yes that was what it was the perfect eye read the measurements of each man who walked in and either admitted them or denied. It was at the gates of... There was a sign above. It said, Heaven! That's what the women were doing. They were perfecting. Finding the pirate. They called it... It was in this logbook. Logged in. This plane that I found after I was sent here by spaceship to investigate why it had crashed and was lost. Yes, what had happened on this flight? What had happened? We'd found the flight recorder and it had said that sperm in the logbook. The pirate, they called it. It was a special XYZ unit referred to in the evidence. The court case held back on the on our planet. Mars to work out an inquiry of what happened on the last days of Earth. And this sperm was what was sought after. And they'd found it. They'd got it. They didn't need us. They'd used it. The Amazons incubated and didn't need us. And they kept this pilot, this last flyer, this one I had been sent to find, who disappeared, whose plane had crashed, all we'd found was a flight recorder, he was frozen in ice, stored, being used, his sperm was being used for her, and all the others, all the others, the plane crash, the it, plane crashes, it was the tombstones. It was stored in the mind, the cortex, a record of what had happened for all time. And 
all of the previous pilots just hadn't had the measurements. They failed. They'd been examined. Their entrails. They'd been scratched open by the fingernails of the these beautiful Amazonian girls in their one-piece bathing costumes. Had that's what Alexandra had been doing. She'd been leaning over this man and her beautiful hair had fallen forward over her face, her eyes, but she had been extending her hand and with her red long fingernails been scratching them down the front of the man to get his entrails, his blood, and suck it out, these vampires, and store it and use it and examine it, and that's what was the perfect specimen. It was Anastasia. Annie, she was there also. She was young. Eternal life was preserved by this DNA sperm, GNA sperm they had found in this one man stored as a source. Tubes, rubber hoses ran from him, but they were turned on and off, clicked on and off, a trigger. It was a necklace. Of course, a necklace was on the Queen, the Amazon. That was the perfect DNA symbol. That's it. That's what she was doing. This... Yes, this boa to see her. Our task is completed, she'd said. He's got the measurements, her ladies in waiting had said. Lock him in. That's why they had said that. That's why the pilot had disappeared. Who he... 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 His voice, it had disappeared over the radar screen. And yes, we'd heard it. He... We... The plane, the... The, the, the dial went round and round and round and the plane had just gone off. Disappeared. Straight off the screen. And... Now, we knew why. We'd located this island. And I remember the last words heard on the radar screen was a female voice saying, Take him in! Right. That's what had happened. And this diary, this pirate machine, another offspin of the dialect that was used that seemed based around this word, the pirate... It recorded everything that had happened in a history of who was worthy. Here with a, a, a page printed out now. It gave instructions. It said how to operate the electronic beam machine. Uh, oh, it said, read ID. He is worthy. Tick box. Then there were instructions. They take the gene, have child, mould, sperm keep, in bank. A label, Amazons. Freeze him. Women have been killing all the men because they're worthless. Hopeless. Don't have the sperm. The measurements, she said. My God, she stood before me. This time she stood in... This time she had short hair, actually, and stood in bra and panties. She started to un... Unclip the items, peel them down. I heard the words of the machine when I was the pilot coming into this area and had seen the Lorelei, her, the Queen, I was flying my plane. I heard dive, 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 went down at blackout that day and saw the gate. Empress Gate was the sign reflecting and I had entered and 
zoomed in and been tested, rated. There was a report card. I blacked out, woke up. A report card came on the screen. My performance. It was given ticks, 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 cross, cross, cross. And then there was an area that was blurred. I hadn't been told I had more tests to do to determine, to decide whether I was worthy of her. Because by implication, the sperm count was what she, they wanted. I'd wandered around this earth, this island, this Robinson Crusoe island. Staggered. They'd let me have my head. I could walk about and but I'd not been consciously aware. I'd not known. I'd been limited. Minuscule. And they'd known. And I'd just wandered around for years and years. And the test was the game whether I could find redemption. Overcome. For what I'd done, she said. She looked at me. Yes. She was cupped in her swimming costume, stretched the elastic and ejected a sound that said, Press! God, it was a test! I could hear from where I stood. Yes. The question, the measurements, that was what it was. That was what they sought. That was what I was doing here. Why I came in the spaceship. That was why I'd been searching for myself in another century. Who came forward in this area to find me. 